Good morning, Home Church Online. It is so good to be with you wherever you're tuning in from. My name's Andrew, and I'm here with Pastor Barb. Pastor Barb, how are you doing this day? I am awesome. How are you, Andrew? I am doing great. It Happy is... St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You're wearing green. I'm so proud of I'm you. Safe. I was worried my wife was on the prowl, pinching everyone this morning, so <laughs> quickly put on green as quickly as I could, so we're safe. You're now. smart. You're yes. smart. <laughs> yes. But wherever you're tuning in from, we are so excited that you're joining us here at Home Church. Church. If you could just comment down below wherever you're tuning in from, we want to actually engage throughout the service. We don't want it to just be faced on screen, but we actually want to build community with you. So comment down below, Take put some of your takeaways from Pastor Jacob's message today, what you're hearing in worship, all those different things. We actually want to build a deep sense of community. Yeah, you know, I love what we say around here. Don't yes. be new, be, be known. known. Yes. And you know, being known means putting yourself out there a yes. little bit, putting... Yeah putting on some effort and so yeah we would love to get to know you we'd also love to agree with you in prayer yeah, come and on. so if you have any prayer requests or maybe you have a praise report maybe God has done something absolutely miraculous in your life we want to celebrate with you and so whether it's a, a prayer request or a praise report you can go on and, and put that in the comments or we have a prayer card yes. on, on our website there and so you can let us know and the team actually prays yes. every week for those things so cool. and yeah that, that is the beauty of, of being in the body of Christ and, and so of course we always want to give an invitation online is awesome yep. and, and, if, and if you live in a remote area you're on holidays you're not feeling well yep. we're so glad that you could join us online but nothing beats being in God's house yes, with God's so people true. so we, we'd love to invite you down any Sunday yes. maybe Easter Sunday that'd be the perfect yes. Sunday to come on down yes we have Good Friday coming up and then Easter Sunday and for any of the events here at Home Church I want to encourage you to go on our social media facebook instagram you can find all those details as well as our website myhomechurch.ca there's an event page that goes through all the fun things we have coming up real soon april 5th next level night we have andrew denson coming out to speak with us share some great things so i want to encourage you to try to come here in person for next level night with andrew denson april 5th and then of course team church yes. april 17th and 18th yes. and team church builds teams that yeah. build churches and Come so of on. course we would love to have you join us for that it's going to be life changing honestly I know sometimes we hear that and it can sound very cliche yeah. but as we build people we build God's house yes. and and the church really is God's plan A for the world today. Yes, that is so good. Well, I can hear behind me people coming in. There's a stir. There's a buildup. I can feel the anticipation that this is going to be something that you're going to really take away today. So lean in, gather your family, friends. Maybe you need to share this out, get your Bible, whatever it is. But we're about to jump into service right now.
Hey, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Happy anniversary. You can stand to your feet. Let's worship together. Come on, would you sing? Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Welcome you sinners, come find His mercy, come to the table, He will satisfy. Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for. Come on, let's all sing for God so love. For God so love, the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open arms For God so love, for God so love The world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in Him Sunday morning. It is good to be together in the house of God. Would you turn to at least five people around you and just give them a high five this morning and welcome everybody to the house of God. It is good to be together on Sunday morning. And it is Selly Sunday. Can everybody say Selly Sunday? So, you know, the rebels score a goal. 
and what happens they have a celebration so help me out right now okay you got this celebration are you gonna help me after I do it you do it you go like this and you go like this come on somebody help me out you got the good old help me out you got the throw your glove up in the air and shoot it it's a day to celebrate. It's our 52nd anniversary today, church family. All locations, six in Alberta and 120 some locations all over the world. It is good to be together and we're going to have a great day in God's house. Pastor Dave Coop is here with us from Coastal Church in Vancouver. And it's going to be awesome, but let's begin by just getting our hearts in the right place. Let's lift our hands in the house of God this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can come into your presence as your people. Lord, fill this place with your presence as we fill this place with your praises. Thank you that we get to be together in your presence. Father, speak to us today. For every person that's here, whether it's their first time here this morning, or maybe they've just started their journey of faith, or maybe for those of us that I've known you for a long time. Thank you for speaking to us this morning, doing a work in our hearts. We give you all the glory and praise today in Jesus' name. We all said, come on, let's put our hands together and give Jesus a praise. I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. Come on, sing it out. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm doubting. I praise when outnumbered. I praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drown in. Here we go. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to pray. And I praise when I don't I praise cause I know You're still in control Oh my praise is a weapon It's more than a sound My praise is the shout That brings Jericho down More sick as long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. No, I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside?
loved me What a friend you have been So good to me God, I can't believe how you love me What a friend you have been
adore you because you are a great and a faithful God. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now we're going to be lifting up our needs before God. And to do that, we're going to read a verse of scripture from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 12, chapter 11, verse 24. And he says, that's why I heard you to pray for absolutely everything, ranging from small to large, including everything as you embrace this God life and you get God's everything. This is taken from the message version. And this is a shouting scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to be praying right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We know, mighty Father, Lord, that you desire to answer our prayers. And Lord Almighty, we lift up needs today, oh God. For that family looking up to you for healing, oh God. We receive our healing in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, for that individual that is trusting you for a job this week. Father, we ask for divine favor. Father, Lord, for those family believing you for the fruit of the womb. Father, Lord, we see their prayers are answered right now in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, for those family believing you for financial needs, oh God. Father, we call those needs met in the name of Jesus. Every need represented here today, oh mighty God we receive answers to our prayers because we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or imagine in the mighty name of Jesus and every believer in the house I want you to shout a big amen amen hallelujah come on put those hands together for the Lord And right up there, I think that's Lay. He's right up there. He's waving it. Grades five to seven. Go have the best time at JY today. And as for us, we're hanging out with the amazing Rosette. What's going on, Rosette? Yes, good morning, Pastor Bryce. Hello, hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to church. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday morning. Hey. Hey. If it is your first time, we would love to give you an extra special welcome. And we would love to connect with you. And there are some ways to connect. If you can scan a QR code on the sides, on the two side screens, that would be great. Or you can also stop at the welcome lounge or the guest services desk on your way out. And our team would be happy to say hi and then answer questions that you have. And we'll give you a gift as well. And did you know that this coming April 7th, Pastor Bryce, there will be a welcome lunch. So we would love you to be there. And you can register at events.myhomechurch.ca. So everyone, let's all welcome our first time guests. Welcome home, everybody. Welcome home. Just make, sh make yourself feel part of the family today. We don't want you to be new today. We want you to be known. That's, That's so amazing. Right. And listen, we prayed already today, but if you've got a need in your body or you're believing in God for a miracle today, we've got my friends in the prayer room are ready to go. If God's not done, we're not done. So at the end of the service, get on up to our prayer room. It's literally behind this section right here on the second floor. And if for some reason you can't get up to the second floor, we're going to have a team right down here uh, to believe with you today. And then something really cool that we're doing today. My wife, Glow, right over there, and myself, we want to meet you. If you're not baptized yet, we're doing a baptism class, and we're going to be up in a new room right next to the prayer center right after the service. So come on up, come see us, and we're going to do just a short lesson on water baptism today, and we're going to have a great time. People are getting baptized all the time around here, and it's just fantastic. So follow God in the waters of baptism, and we'd love to see you right after the service today. Well, right now we got a lot of things happening right around home church. This is the time where you can take out your phones, get that calendar open, and uh, let's be all in and a part of what God's doing here at home church. Let's go. Hey church family, we are just two weeks away from Easter and that means we just have two weeks to get our invitations all over the city. I want to encourage you, in your cup holders are these Tri-Church invitations. 
I want you to take them to the coffee shop, take them to the gym, take them to your Aunt Martha's house, take them absolutely everywhere. People are so open to the gospel at Easter time. And so right now, would you, would you find them? Look in your cup holder, look in the cup holder on the other side of you. And would you take them in your hand right now? We're gonna take a moment and just pray together. Lord, we just thank you so much that your will is that every person would come to know you. And so Lord, we come into agreement right now over every invitation. God, would you put your hand, would you put your favor, would you go before us? And Lord, we agree that this Easter is gonna be the greatest season of salvations at Home Church in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that, why don't you say a great big amen. Hey, we wanna make sure that you know Good Friday services are at six o'clock. Easter Sunday morning, 10.30. We're gonna have all sorts of fun planned for the kids. We're gonna have a petting zoo for after. So make sure you let everybody know they wanna come home this Easter Sunday. All right, home church. I have the privilege of hanging out with one of the best kids pastors of all time, Pastor Chantel. Good morning, everyone. And listen, what, what time is it? It's offering time. Yay, 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 yay. Listen, um, Pastor Chantel is just absolutely incredible and her and the team and Dylan, your wife's been amazing too. Pastor yes, Chantel she is. has been on, on Matt Leave and Jess has filled in over this last season and we're, we're moving kids forward together. And uh, we just wanna talk to you today about how we're all gonna move uh, church forward in this next season, kind of focusing on some of the kids area. So what's coming up that we can all be a part of? So I want to invite you all to a very special next level night with Andrew Denton. He's an incredible businessman from Australia. So you want to be there. It's on Friday, April the 5th. So you don't want to miss it. So it's really important. Psalm uh, 145 says this says, let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts and let them proclaim your power. And so Pastor Chantel, not a lot of people know that we've got a lot of unfinished area for kids. We have a lot of unfinished areas for kids. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of area. We so do. there's a glass area right here, kids yeah. play place. Yeah. And it's gonna look absolutely amazing. So much fun for the kids when that gets done. And then what's back here, just so everybody knows. So we currently have our bottom kids wing opened, but on the very first Sunday that we opened Legacy Place, we were way over capacity. Wow. Yeah, so we actually have been using the school gym for our preschoolers right now. But upstairs is where we need to go next. Upstairs is where our kids auditorium is. Can you imagine, yeah, give it up. Can you imagine doing church without this auditorium? That's what it's like in kids right now. We're doing small groups and it's great, but there's nothing like when we all come together and we get to worship, pray, press in, there's the altar call is open, and that's where we need to go to bring kids to the next level. We need that hey. upstairs done. Do you sense the urgency? <laughs> Please. So I hope that you will connect around the urgency today, because I feel this urgency uh, to take the next level uh, of our church to impart, man, get the kids play place done, to get the auditorium done for our children. And so our next level offering, our legacy offering is coming April the 14th. So we really want you to all be in. We can all do something to be praying and preparing right now uh, for this offering on the 14th uh, because God's not done yet. He's not even close. You guys get ready. I am so excited for this next season in kids ministry. And Pastor Bryce, can I just share why kids? Why kids? Okay. There is no greater joy than seeing a child encounter the love of our Heavenly Father. There is something so beautiful when you see their arms lifted up and they feel Jesus. And that's what we get to experience every week in Kids Church. The kids of today are gonna to be the leaders of tomorrow. 
and there is an attack on our kids. Not just the kids in this church, but the kids in whole. You know who wants this next generation? Satan. But the body of Christ, we need to wake up. We are the ones that are called to pour into kids. It's not media, it's not TV, it is you, it is me, and we can't do this. Yeah. I can't do this alone. The kids team can't do this alone. We need every person to have that heart. Father, I'm gonna invest in the next generation. I'm gonna do whatever it takes because they're gonna be the next David. They're gonna be the next Debras. They're gonna be the next leaders of this nation. And please, Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm shaking because I feel a desperation in my spirit that if we sit back, we're going to miss out on the opportunity. They show zero to nine. That's when the moral foundation is built, zero to nine. And then it gets tested when they hit 10 years old. So right now, our kids is under the age of nine. Will you help us get up to that next facility so that we can teach them the Word of God, so they can come to the altar, so that they have a biblical worldview? Because yeah. that's what we need in this world. Amen? Yeah, amen. amen. Sorry, I got passionate there. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why you brought me a chair. <laughs> why were we on stools? I don't know. You're on fire. I love kids and Jesus. <laughs> what do you do with that? I'll tell you what we do. We take an offering. <laughs> and let's really pray. Let's really believe. Because you know, we see so many miracles. And you might be like, I'm a student. Or you might be a kid. My kids, they give. They've given to that play place because they believe. They believe it. They can see it. And my prayer is that you guys can see the kids' place done and kids from the community flooding to be here flooding we're gonna see a revival and you might say it's just a play place no 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 that is a tool for the kingdom a mighty tool that just slices the enemy okay that's my warrior in me okay so father Jesus Lord may we not sit and let the world influence the next generation but Father, I pray that something stirs up in every person in this room that they are like, no, I'm gonna pour into the next generation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour out the love. I'm gonna instill the biblical truth. I'm gonna make sure that the next generation is on fire for Jesus. And Father, we just ask for miracles. Lord, I'm so thankful for everyone who has poured out and we stand in this building and it's a miracle. But Father, we're not done. There is so much more. So Father, would you take what we have? Would you put your hand upon it? Would you multiply? Would you do what needs to be done? And God, we're believing for a miracle that this upstairs is gonna be done this year, that the kids' play place is gonna be done this year. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. Hey, listen, Pastor Chantel, thank you so much for all you do. You know, as, as parents, Glow and I, we have, we have never, felt like we had to try to get our kids to church. They wanted to be here. They couldn't wait to get here. And if for some reason, if they ever missed, they were like, what? What? We don't get to go. So thank you. I would like thank to you. say, it's not me. It's the team. Yes. I have the most incredible team. And if you're one of our HD Kids team, I want you to stand up. We're just going to give it a big shout. You guys are awesome. We love you. Truly. Way to go, guys. The team we have is on passion. They're on fire for Jesus. And that's what makes the world of a difference. So good. Well, these are the ways to give. Thank you for praying about the next level offering, the legacy offering coming up on April the 14th. The ways to give are here. Let's keep church strong, ministry strong, going every single week. And we're believing God that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could even ever ask or even think or imagine. All right. So right now we've got an incredible story. Uh, so let's check out the screens.
My name is Olu, and this is my wife, Obi. Obi. Yeah. She's going to the game face. I say my name when she say my name by myself. Okay. You say your name yourself. Okay. okay. <laughs> my name is Olu, and this is my wife, Obi. We have three sons, Tam, Timmy, and Toby, and we all serve in the house. We've been, we've been in home church for nine years now. Yeah, nine years in June. Yeah, we started from the old location um, in 2015. And two years after that, we moved to Red Deer. We moved to Red Deer. We've been serving in the house. We started, um, I started with um, the setup team back in Olds. Then we were part of the worship team. Yeah. Yeah. Then in 2017, we moved here to Red Deer and we just continued where we stopped. Um, I mean, now we serve um, in the worship team, section host, our guest experience, uh, what prayer else? Team. Prayer team. And, and our kids serve in the house as Success well. Builders. And Success Builders. Yeah. Our kids serve in the house as well and they attend Destiny Christian School. And one of the things we're so grateful for is the fact that our, our kids also love God and they are always, always willing to serve in the house as well. Um, our last, our last son got dedicated, got dedicated here, yeah, yeah. And, and the first two sons and got baptized here as well. In 2015, when we, I mean, got to home church, my first experience, it was a very funny story. Um, I got to old over the weekend and I was, you know, I didn't know uh, which church to go to but I just knew I needed to go to church. So I went, I prayed about it. I even told my wife I was thinking about which church we needed to go to. And I went online and started looking at churches online in Olds. And I just don't know, I saw Pastor Jenkins' picture and his family, and I just, something just clicked in me and I just felt like this was the place I was meant to be. And next day on Sunday, I went to church in Olds. Then I met some amazing people. Um, I remember Dan Doliski. He was the first person I met that shouted, you know, when he saw me, he ran to me, he asked for my name, and he tried to pronounce my full names. <laughs> he was just awesome. And immediately after service, I called my wife and I told her that, yeah, we, we have a church we're gonna be going to here in Olds. And honestly, when I came into Olds, when I got to town, I was really so, so amazed about the people there the warm welcome, they were so nice. In fact, there was a point where I got to start working, I think two months after I was needing care, after school care for my kids. I couldn't, the daycare were closed by the time I will finish from work. And I can remember Pastor Mel and Ed helping me out with the kids. Honestly, and my child was just one month, one year at the time. It was really amazing about how they showed the love of God there. And since then I knew this was just the right place. I could not, and you know what? When we even wanted to move to Red Deer, um, two years after, I told Olu, one thing we don't have to look for is the church. Because yeah. one thing is that we have that church already, we have that family already. And when we came to Red Deer, it was just the same thing as well. We met families, we met friends that, or well, friends that have become families yeah. now. Yeah and the same for our children as well too. So we just, just feels like home. We are stakeholders in the house. Uh, we believe in the vision that everyone needs Jesus and everyone needs a home. It's what we also firmly believe. We as well believe strongly in tithing and offering and contributing to the building is a vital part of what a God has called us to do. And we love to see the church, you know, growing to the next level. And we know as a stakeholder, we are a part of it. That's right. And then anytime there's a baptism, people are encountering miracles, we believe that we're part of those that made that happen. And we're so excited about the next level legacy offering. And we are so pumped that we're gonna be part of it. And it's something we're really looking forward to. Because we know that next level, not just for the church, but even for us personally, it means a lot to us. We are so thankful for Jesus and his church and we are ready to go to the next level. <laughs> so good, let's stand to our feet this morning. Turn one more time to someone and say, it's time to go to the next level. Time to go to the next level. And listen, can we just put our hands together and just say thank you to Olu and Obi for telling us their story this morning. 
And we're going to have a great time in the house of God. Well, welcome to church. If this is your first time with us, we want to give you the biggest welcome. Now, let me just tell you about the biggest welcome is, I don't know about you, but I'm really thankful for Canada geese right now. Is there anybody else? Canada geese. And Jude and Matthew can tell you this, that it's been a tradition in our house that we'll be driving down the road and the first time in the spring that we see Canada geese, I will roll down all the windows in the car and we will all yell to the Canada geese, welcome home! And we're so excited because we know that the next six months is gonna be the best part of the year, am I right? And so, I just want you to know, if you're brand new with us today or you're relatively new in the church, to us, you're our Canada geese. We are so glad that you're here, but also home with us, and we just want to welcome you this morning. So can I get a great big welcome home for all that are joining us today? Welcome home. We're glad that you're here with us. Welcome home. And uh, we're just glad to be together in the house of God. Now, if you would take out your cell phones with me. Before we get to the cell phone, I just got to tell you, Destiny Christian Boys won the championship yesterday. Wajaha. And we were, we were driving to the game. We're driving to the game, just, just Becca and I. And Becca says, babe, do they have a chance? And I said, well... They, they beat a team that we lost to by five earlier in the season. So, you know, they only beat them by three, five, eight. It's close. You know, it's going to be a close game. I don't know, but I think they can do it. By the end of the third quarter, they were up by 31 points. They played out of their minds. And so, yeah, just give them one big hand tonight. And then... If you would take out your phone with me, take out your phone, and, and then you can put it away after this, but everybody take out your phone, and there's that little scan right there for Team Church, and mine isn't working, there it goes, there it goes, and I'm already registered, but I would love literally every person in the house to register for Team Church. It's on a Thursday, so it's Wednesday night, the 17th, Thursday in the day, so you're gonna need to book that day off and be here, but I'm literally asking from all of our locations, not that like 20% or 30% or those that serve already would come to this day, but I'm asking that our whole church will come. So get your phone out there, get it on Team Church one day, and we're gonna see the best days ahead for our church. Come on, let's put our hands together on Sunday morning. I'm excited. Well, let's, let's go to God's Word this morning, and we're going to turn to 1 John this morning, 1 John chapter 4, and it says this, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God. Can you say it with me? For God is love. God showed us how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Verse 10, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. Is there anybody thankful that Jesus loves you this morning, that God loves you? Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent to us His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and His love is brought into full expression in us. Now, I want to go back to verse 10, because this is what we're going to really aim for this morning. Would you read this with me? This is real love. Not that we loved God, 
but that he loved us. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Let it sink into our hearts real deep today. I pray, Lord, that we would sense your love and know your love. Your love would fill us this morning so that we can give your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Anoint this message. Anoint this word this morning in Jesus' name. And together we all said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of God on this incredible Sunday morning. Beck, if you can take my cell phone for me, that would be amazing. Thank you. Let's take a moment and just put our hands together. Welcome all those that are joining us online as well this morning. Glad that you're with us on this Sunday. And today I want to talk about a message entitled, Let God Love You. Let God love you. Last week or two weeks ago, when we started this series, we started talking about dating, and that I often talk to young people about the love meter or the like meter, and I say, Do you, are you in like or are you in love? And when the meter kind of crosses that like love, everything changes at love, Everything costs more, there's an expense. Time doesn't matter, you're talking on the phone at four in the morning, I don't wanna say goodbye. <laughs> one more story, let me tell you, one more time. I, I like you. <laughs> Something happens when you start Crossing that love moment and all of a sudden googly eyes and you say dumb stuff, you put yourself out there. And so I thought I would go back in history and look at a love letter that I wrote to Becca many years ago. But before I get there, as I was looking through the love letters that I wrote Becca, and she's got a whole box of them, she's kept every single one of them, I found the 11 things that she was looking for in a husband. Number one. <laughs> and I'm in trouble already. I have this saying, and it's a terrible saying. It doesn't make sense, but I have this saying, the doghouse leads to the penthouse. I don't know what that means, but I have a feeling I'm gonna start in the doghouse today. But I found this. Now I'm scared to read it to you this morning. <laughs> Number one is that he's gotta be cute. Check mark for me. He loves God incredibly, check mark for me. He loves me incredibly, check mark for me. Number four is a good listener. Well, we're three out of four, everybody. <laughs> Working on that one. Hard worker, supports me in my decision. Compassionate, gentle. I'm doing pretty good so far. Can make these good decisions. Can handle money wisely. Enjoys the kids. Uh, uh, can kiss good. <laughs> I'm one, I'm 10 for 11. I'm 10 for 11. Nobody's perfect. So I'm 10 for 11. But this is, this is one that I wrote, I wrote this one on, as, as everything turned into the year 2000. We got married in year 2000. And so this is, the year before we got married, and it starts with, happy millennium, baby. <laughs> happy millennium, baby. <laughs> and I had given her a candle for the millennium, and it says, this candle represents the light of our love. It will never fade or ever go away. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it will always burn bright even in the tough times. Baby, I'm so glad 
to start this new century with you. And I know this year is going to be the best year of our lives. I love you more than golf, <laughs> football, basketball. Oh, this was for D-Rock or the WWE. Very important. Very important. I love you more than anything else in the world. I love you more than my car or my house. I mean, when you go to love, it gets crazy. I love you more than my songs. I love you more than any money or anything would, could possibly give. Becca, I really, 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 this is when you're in love. Because you just say really as many times because you have nothing else to say. Really <laughs> love you. You become my best friend, the one I miss when I go away, and soon will be my lover. <laughs> Message is done. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I can be a good husband and friend. I'll do my best anyways. I always want you to remember this. I love you, and you're the most beautiful girl in the world to me. And 23 years later, I can still say that is the case. <laughs> Something happens when you go from like to love. You, you just say things that you normally wouldn't say because you're in love. And there's places that you love and there's products that you love and there's people that you love. And a couple weeks ago, we talked about Peter and how Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? There's the four Greek words for love and he wasn't saying, do you fillet me, brotherly love? He wasn't saying, do you storge me, family huff, or eros me, sexual erotic love? No, Jesus was saying, Peter, do you agape me? Agape is love that never changes. It's sacrificial, committed, covenanted. It's not the like meter. It's the I love you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Is there anybody thankful that there's a God that loves you so much he gave himself for you? Covenantal love. And Peter's at this turning point where he says, do you love me? And because of Peter's response, it was a turning point for his behavior, his purpose, and his identity. And Simon became Peter. The reed became a rock. The disciple became an apostle. All over this question, do you love me? And today I want to answer really three of four questions. We'll, we'll answer all four, but next week we'll really get to all four. Question one is, where does love come from? Question two is, what, what kind of love is it? Question three, how do I receive love? Question four is, how do I give love? Well, 1 John answers all of these questions. First question, where does love come from? Well, verse seven, let us continue to love one another. Would you read this with me? For love is from God. And then it continues, for God is love. Where does love come from? It comes from God. For God is love. All love originates and exists in God. And without God, there's no such thing as love. Love comes from God because God is love. Essence of God is love. The nature of God is love. The character of God is love. The actions of God and sending His Son proves His love to us. And it's not that God has some love. No, that God is love. And the second question is well, what kind of love is it? Well, it's that agape love that we were just talking about with Peter. And Jesus, it's long-lasting, covenant, non-demanding, self-giving, without expecting repayment, eternal love. The Old Testament, it, it talks about covenantal love to a thousand generations. David said his love endures forever. New Testament, it's the cross. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and God showed his love for us. The world uses love in all sorts of twisted ways, but also it's, 
in a lot of watered down ways. To the world, that word love could just be sexual or it could be without intimacy. That word could be just getting what I can get out of that relationship or that friendship. It's all about me or me first. I put, I heard it recently, I put myself first. Yet God's love prefers others. God's love lays down your life for one another. Oh, this can change marriages as, as it says in scripture, love like Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. The world's love can just be love you today and ghost you tomorrow. If you've been ghosted, just put up your hands. We're gonna have a healing service for all those that have been ghosted. Can I just tell you, pastors get ghosted too. There's something about that sense of abandonment. As someone has left you and you can't seem to get their attention, you don't know what you've ever done wrong, but you're just ghosted. And the world's love keeps breaking. Why? Because the world doesn't know this agape. And some believers don't even know the agape love. John says, he who does not love agape does not know God, for God is love. Now look at this word know, to know. It's the word to know by experience. Now this is where worship becomes so important. This is where our life with God and our relationship with God and the word of God becomes so important to our lives because if you don't know God or receive from God or have a relationship with God, how can you love others properly if you don't know the love of God? Once you know the love of God, well, you know a few things. You know that we are all sinners. We know that God sent his son, he died for us. His presence and his love are for us and we know that he loved us first. What kind of love is it? It's agape love. And then we get to point three, which is where I really wanna to get to this morning. How do we receive it? How do we receive it? My answer for you this morning is really simple. Let God love you. Let the walls come down. Put aside the hurts and the wounds. And let God love you. A good definition for worship is worship is a response to God's love which he freely gives to us. Verse 10, this is real love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. I would like you just to take a moment and just in your own mind, start to change your verbiage because when you start talking about I love God, I do this, I do something else, I read my Bible, I pray, all of these different things. Do you know what, there's a problem, there's a word that's got an I in the middle of it, it's called pride. I love God, really, really? You really wanna start the conversation with I love God when he's the one who gave his only son, when he's the one who let nails go into his hands and feet for us? Really, you wanna talk about how much you love God? How about you talk about how much he loves you? Because he loved you while you were yet a sinner. Christ died for us. Can we put our hands together from the top to the bottom, all around, and thank God for his amazing love for us. And our job, because he loved us first, I, I want you to hear this this morning, our job is really simple. Our job is to guard and keep a responsive heart. Guard your heart. Because the moment that you stop letting God's love in is the moment that God's love can't go out. The moment that you stop God's love, because he's the originator, he's the author, without him, love doesn't exist. 
So if his agape isn't coming into your life, then you'll settle for other lesser forms of love. And the agape love of God won't flow through you. What would happen in the church of Jesus Christ if agape was allowed to come into our lives and what came out of our lives in our marriages, in our families, in our friendships, in our relationships altogether was truly God's love, agape love. Oh, the world would be such a different place, wouldn't it? Our job is to keep a guard, a responsive heart, responsive, it's quick to react. Reactive, receptive, open to suggestions, amiable, flexible, accessible, approachable, forthcoming, sensitive. All the tough guys, I want you to hear this this morning. Sensitive, perceptive, sympathetic, well-disposed, impressionable, open, alive, awake, aware, responsive. Our job as believers in Jesus isn't to be I, 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 I. Our job is to be him, 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 him. And through us comes the love of Jesus to people who so desperately need it. And responsiveness, responsiveness will change your behavior as it did with Peter. Responsive, responsive says, responsive in behavior says, Lord, I repent. That's a response of heart. Lord, I repent. Saul would make all sorts of excuses, but David said in Psalm 51.10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. David, a man after God's heart. No, he wasn't a perfect man, but he was a responsive man. When we got married, and of course, maybe next week you'd like me to read another couple notes from Becca. <laughs> but we, when we got married, I, I did ask Becca, I said, why did you marry me? And she said, I married you because I knew that you would always turn your heart to God. A responsive heart. Responsive in purpose. Responsive in purpose says, Lord, send me. Lord, what would you want me to do? Of course, Jesus says to Peter, feed my sheep. And then you see Peter stepping out into the call of God. Isaiah, whom shall I send? Lord, send me. Samuel, speak, Lord. My servant is listening. And there's a watching of the green and yellow and red lights in your life to the Holy Spirit's call. I remember one time, this is years and years ago before we were pastoring the church, we had an opportunity to go to Los Angeles and, and it was way more money, and it was way more opportunity. And so we got on the plane, and we got in our car, and I was so excited. We're going to move to Los Angeles. This is the best, babe. And we get into the car, and we drive to where we're going. And it was funny. When we stopped at the light, there was a red blinking light. And it just kept blinking. And I looked over at Becca and she looked over at me and she said, babe, we're not supposed to be here. <laughs> I hope you're thankful that the Lord turned us around <laughs> and we were responsive. Say, Lord, we're not supposed to. No, we're supposed to be in Red Deer, Alberta. <laughs> responsive in purpose, responsive in identity says, God is pleased with me. We sang it this morning. You take me just as I am. You choose me all over again. My identity is in the fact that God loves me. God loves you. Just like the father said to his son, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. When we give our lives to Jesus, we become sons and daughters of the king of kings. And so just like I look at my kids and I go, you're perfect. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to say anything to please me. You, I'm pleased with you before you do anything. God is pleased with you, not because of what you do, because who you are. He loves you. And a responsive identity is just knowing that 
I'm God's, he loves me. Let God love you. The reality is that many of us aren't very good at receiving. In fact, studies show that negativity is way more sticky than positivity. You are prone to listen to negative words four times more than positive. That's why someone can say 10 good things, but the one thing that they say that's negative, you'll stay up all night over. And you'll just chew on that and you'll resuscitate those things and say them all over and again. And oftentimes we have defenses against intimacy because we've been hurt before. We have fears of strings attached and how could I ever pay it back? Or we have fear of losing control. Some of us got control issues. No, I don't want you to love me like that because I want control, God. God says, just give it up. Give it to me and let me love you. Walls down, heart open, receiving. Well, some, some need to pray a prayer or something like this this morning. Lord, I don't want to live numb anymore. Open my heart again to you, Jesus. I don't want to live fear-based. Perfect love casts out all fear. So when you let God love you, when you let his love in you, that's when his love starts to come out of you. So let me just say a few things to you before we get out of here this morning. Worship is a response. So when you let God love you in worship, that's when true worship can get turned around to say, I love you, Lord, because you first love me. In your marriage, that's when life gets real good is when your heart is open and your spouse says to you, I love you, and you actually receive it. Something fills you when that agape love fills you and you go, oh, I love you, babe. And then all of a sudden there's a bank. There's something in you that can love back and all of a sudden there's responsiveness back and forth and back and forth and some of you have got so hard hearted that you don't remember the last time that you responded you've heard words and some have stepped out and tried but it just hasn't come to the place where it's rebounding back and forth and creating love marriages that are in the like meter need to go back to some cards that you wrote before you got married and go, whoa, what did I say? Oh, just like the Bible talks about remembering your first love for Jesus. Oh, get your heart open for Jesus, but also get your heart open for your wife, your husband. Because when agape enters friendship, family, marriage, Everything changes. The opposite of response is apathetic or indifferent or insensitive. Can I just ask you the question? Because I believe it's, there'd be many here today who would answer this. Well, how many of you want to be responsive to the love of God? Would you just put your hand up if that's you? I want to be responsive. How many of you just say, I want to be more responsive to the love of God? How many of you just say, I want the agape to flow through me. I want to receive so that I can give agape love. Well, then let's get to the last question. How do I receive God's love? Well, first of all is to meditate. Cover to cover, this book is just saying the same thing to you and I. To those that are watching online, it says the same thing over and over again. It's just saying, I love you from the beginning and I'll love you till the end. It's God's love book for you. So when you meditate on God's word, the love of God fills you so that the love of God can flow through you. Let your pastor love you. Maybe you've had some other experiences or some past experience where somebody hurt you. Can I tell you, I, I just, 
man, I just want to love. I'm a, if I'm the shepherd. God called me to be the shepherd in this house. Let me love you. Let me love your kids. Let me love your teens. Don't have walls up for pastor because you got a hurt in the past. No, just open up your heart again because God wants to speak to you. What about your friends? What about in your marriage? Would you just lower those walls and let people around you love you? And then we're going to talk about this more next week, but it's literally meditate and reciprocate. Reciprocate, it means to respond. And in verse 11, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and His love is brought to full expression in us. Generosity doesn't start with you. Generosity starts with a God that was generous with us. And when we recognize it and receive it, what else can we do but be generous? Love doesn't start with me. I don't just choose to love. No, it's, it's that, that would be, that would be such a hard way to live. Just choose to love, just choose to love. What a hard way to live. There, there's a bit of truth in that, that you gotta choose to love. But can I just tell you the best way to love is to get your heart open and let the love of God fill you. And let me tell you, that love will just start to flow through you. And it's not going to be hard or difficult or rough or some sort of like demanding of lists of things that you got to do. No, there's going to be a love that flows out of your life. This is real life. This is real happy life to be a responder. Guard your heart above all else because everything flows out of this heart. Let your heart be a responding heart to God. The greatest gift that you can receive is the love of God. So let God love you. Before we read a couple more scriptures and pray together, would you just bump the person beside you and just say, yeah. Let God love you. Just bump the other person beside you and just say it to them just a little bit. Just say, open your heart just a little wider to the love of God. John 3.16. If we could stand to our feet this morning. John 3.16. Would you read these scriptures with me? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans chapter five, verse eight, but God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. First John 4, 10, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but He loved us and sent His Son to take away our sins. With every eye closed in this place, if you're here this morning, this is the day to receive the love of God for the first time, to know His love, to receive His love. And you're here this morning and say, Pastor, I haven't been living for God. Pastor, my heart has been closed to God, but today's my day to say yes to Jesus, to yes to what he did for me on the cross with every eye closed. You're here this morning. You'd like to pray a prayer, a salvation prayer, a prayer of reconnection and intimacy with Jesus, inviting Jesus into your life to know him. You're here this morning. Just on the count of three, would you just boldly lift up your hand all over this place at the count of three. Just lift it up, and I can't wait to pray with you this morning. One, two, three. Would you just lift up your hand this morning? Amen. Thank you for your hand. Just keep it up for a moment. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for your hand this morning. Yes, your hand. I see your hand. I know God sees it way up in the top. Oh, he's working on your heart. Thank you for your hands and your hands and your hands. Your hands, your hands. And church family, can we all put our hands up with these that have their hands up this morning? 
and just pray this prayer and say, Lord Jesus, thank you. You gave me the greatest gift, love through your son, Jesus Christ. Today I receive your love and all the forgiveness that comes with it. Thank you that you take me just as I am. Thank you that you love me just as I am. I receive your love today. I receive the forgiveness of sins, a new beginning, a new start. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we put our hands together and just celebrate all those who prayed that prayer? You're here this morning. Maybe your heart looks like this. This is your receptivity. Maybe some of you just take your hands like this and you just go, my heart's opening to respond. Some of you would go like this, some of you would go like this. Some of you would just like do the splits, you know. Would you just take a moment and just go ahead and just lift up your hands how you want to this morning. And Lord, this morning in your house and in your presence, thank you that our hands are up. Would you pray this prayer after me this morning and just pray this prayer and say, Lord, give me a responsive heart. Take my heart of stone. Put your hands on it. Massage it. Move it. Turn me into clay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. be okay to sing this. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. loves me, he would die. Jesus loves me, he would die. Heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin and he'll make me whole again. Sorry, I got it wrong.
babies love Jesus this morning. We love you, Jesus. Yeah, just cry out to Jesus. Somebody just tell Jesus how much you love him this morning. Would you do that? Just thank God for his love and his mercy and his kindness. Oh, we love you. The one who first loved us. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance toward you. Give you his peace. If you're not done this morning, I want to encourage you to go up to the prayer room. Have the prayer team pray for you, but I just bless you with the love of God and the peace of God today. In Jesus' name and together, the whole church is said. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today at Home Church Online. If you said yes to Jesus, would you go to our website and click the button that actually says, I said yes to Jesus. We'd love to connect with you and give you some next steps. Other than that, have an amazing week, everyone, and we'll see you next Sunday right here at our Home Church Online experience. God bless you, everybody.